doesn't make sense is them inviting us to take part in that paranormal thing then disappearing like that yes either people around here have got some sort of strange sense of humor or there really is something unexplainable going on if they were playing some sort of joke what would be the reason for it and where would they have gone as i say when i searched the place they had definitely vanished completely disappeared and very quickly mind you it was the middle of the night and very dark they could have been hiding out anywhere. But if they were, why? What advantage would it be to them? Oh, I just don't know. Other than to enhance their paranormal thing. I'm sure some of these TV programmes are staged. Mm. When nothing actually happens, they make it up. Yes, well, I suppose that's possible. I'll tell you one thing. That if I set eyes on those two ever again, I shall make it known how unimpressed I was at them abandoning me like that. Right, well, that said... What I reckon we should do is go back to the hotel, find out what room Ellen is in, and you should ask her some questions, point blank. Yeah. If that was a joke last night, then it was in very bad taste. Good idea. No doubt, though, she and her brother have checked out by now and left the area. Right, well, let's go back and ask, shall we? OK, Jake, I'm right behind you. And my name was it? Ellen. Ellen Holden. We met her here at breakfast yesterday. Hmm. Well, I'm not coming up with anything of that name, my lovely. Oh, well, perhaps she's booked out and gone. I don't suppose her brother might be on your system, is he? And what would his name be? Oliver, or Ollie. Same surname? <laughs> I'm assuming so, but I don't know for sure. No, not coming up with anything of that name. Is there uh, any Oliver or Ollie booked in here at all? Uh, let me see. No, nothing's coming up. I've also mm. checked both names and there's no record of either having been booked in here recently. This gets ever more puzzling, doesn't it just? Is there anything else I can help you with, my lovelies? Uh, uh, no, 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 thank you very much indeed for all your help. Oh, you're welcome. OK. Right, well, we're here to research the mines in Cornwall. Perhaps it'd be best if we just left this particular one and moved on, yeah? Well, I suppose that's the most sensible thing to do. But there's a big part of me wants to get to the bottom of it all. Look, let's give it this morning. Uh, go back to Will Splendor and see if anything does come to light. All right, well, if you want. Yes, I think I do. And if nothing does, then OK, we make our way down to the next mine. But do you remember what that landlord said to us in that pub on our first day? Oh, what, the place with the dreadful salmon sandwiches? That's the one. When we mentioned Wheel Splendour, his attitude turned very serious, and he warned us that not very good things happened there. Oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? OK, let's get our stuff. Go back to the mine and give it a real good going over this time. Right. Well, to be quite honest, mate, I reckon our job here is done. We've taken the best tour of the mine in daylight that we've had so far. Got more pics and video, so apart from going online to do further research, there isn't a lot more point in us both hanging on here. No, <coughs> I reckon you're right. Oh, mind your back, hey. Jake. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I wasn't aware you'd be on <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, lad. Uh, oh, uh, just up here doing the very same thing as both of you, I've no doubt. Oh, how do you know what we're doing? Now, uh, you've got that thirst for historical knowledge look about <laughs> you both. Well, yeah, you could say that's uh, pretty accurate. Uh, I'm Bob, by the way, uh, Bob Arkwright. Oh, well, I'm, I'm Andy North, and uh, this is Jake Westall. Hi. Uh, I'm pleased to meet you both. Uh, so, uh, I'm right then, am I? You've got thirst for knowledge, and that includes these lovely old Cornish tin and copper mines, mm. eh? Oh, absolutely spot on there. Uh. Uh, you look uh, pretty solid to me yourself. Eh? <laughs> Jake! <laughs> well, I like to think I'm a pretty solid sort of chap. You certainly don't <laughs> seem like a ghost. Oh, just ignore him, Bob. Oh, I'm definitely alive and well. <laughs> 
But there are a number of folks still hanging around this place who sadly aren't. Believe me. You seem to know a fair bit about Will Splendor. Yes, your theory was correct. Jake and I are on a Cornish tin mine tour, doing a bit of research along the way. Oh, excellent. Well, I tell you what. My cottage is just along here. It overlooks the cove. Come back with me, have a cuppa, mm-hmm. and I'll tell you what I know and show you what I've collected mm. when it comes to the real splendour. Right, well, make yourselves at home, gents. Help yourselves to melt the sugar. Oh, thank you. What a fabulous cottage. <laughs> what a view from the front window, eh? Why do you think I call this place Atlantic View, eh? Oh, I would think that goes without saying. <laughs> oh, no yeah. sugar for my thanks. Uh, Have you lived here long, Bob? Yeah, about 40 mm. years. Come here when me and my missus split up. Ah. She reckoned she couldn't stand <laughs> living in a place full of box files and notebooks. <laughs> but that's my life, researching mm. and writing. Why did you choose this place? Because it was just along from the wheel splendour? Not initially. But looking back, I reckon there was a definite pull. Mm. I think it was all the drama that had gone on back in the past that was beckoning to me. I get the impression that this mine is no exception when it comes to, shall we say, eventful working practices. Oh, yes. Well, back in the 1800s, they never had the employment laws like they got now. (laughs) Very true. Right, well, of course, I... I don't know how much information you already got hold of, but I'll tell you what I know. Wheel Splendor opened in 1862 and continued to operate until 1894. It employed many local people, Mm. and of course, many lost their lives down there. Oh yes, of course. The conditions down there must have been horrendous. Oh yes, and not made any better by the bloke that was in charge from about 1866. Oh, well, have you got a name for him by any chance? I have. He was notorious. The people who worked there were terrified of him. Lucas Bernard. Lucas Bernard? Mm. Oh, but that's the name that guy down on the beach the other day. The bloke in the Victorian costume yeah. with the old camera. Very brusque. Oh, so you've come across him too, have you, Horace Bernard? Many have reported seeing his apparition, taking photos of the mine. He and his brother Lucas fell out, and Horace sadly Mm. lost his life just like all them mine workers did. And dare we ask what happened to them? Thrown down the mine shaft by Lucas when the pump and machinery was in operation. Oh, good grief. So when next you goes back there, if you do, (laughs) watch out for the spirits of both Lucas and Horace Bernard and the cries of all them what lost their lives so tragically. Oh, it was obvious we'd have to come back here for another look after meeting old Bob there. Yeah, he was great, wasn't he? Yes. And definitely a living and breathing human being. And almost lethal on that old bicycle of his. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And such a lovely cottage too. Idyllic in every way. Yeah. Granite built, coastal views and near to this fascinating place. Oh, I didn't show him any of those photos or video footage I took here the other day. I clean forgot. Oh, well, never mind. I reckon he told us more than enough to be going on with. It'd be great to keep in touch with him. Oh, yeah, well, we uh, got his contact details now. Right, well, one more look around the other engine house, and mm-hmm. I think we can put this one to bed, as it were. Yep. Yeah. Mind you, there is one other thing I wouldn't mind doing before mm-hmm. we move on. Take a look at the local churchyard. Ah. Just to suss out the graves of all those that worked down the mine, and those that lost their lives here as a result. Right. Well, I reckon we'll have to go in the direction of that pub we went into on our first day, um, the, the Ship's Wheel Inn. Yeah, yeah, there was a church and graveyard nearby, wasn't there? Mm. Yeah, I reckon that's the nearest. Blimey! Some of these gravestones and memorials are so old and weathered, it's a job to see the lettering. Yes, and this graveyard is pretty well overgrown in places. Yeah. Oh, here we go. 
A stone with a few names engraved on it, dedicated to those that lost their lives at the Wheel Splendor Mine. Oh, well done. Blimey. Ah, look what I found. The grave of Horace Bernard, no less. Hmm? Died 16th of August, 1868, aged 59. No. Lost his life tragically at the hands of his brother Lucas. Wow. Hence that bloke at the pub telling us what a bad place that mine is or was. Also bears out what old Bob told us too. Indeed, but was that guy with the camera on the beach claiming to be Horace Bernard just play acting for some strange reason or... Or was he the ghost of the real person? Mm -hmm. Personally, I think he was someone playing a game. Yeah. I think he and that woman Ellen were also playing a game together. But the question is, why? It's an extremely good question, but I reckon it would now be a good idea to move on, as you suggested earlier. No, oh, OK. But, as it's only next door, shall we pop into the ship's wheel in for a quick farewell drink? Uh, yeah, yeah, why not? Uh, but I think I'll pass when it comes to the salmon sandwiches <laughs> this time. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> There you go, my lovers. Two pints of the best. Yeah, cheers. Oh, thanks, Felix. Yeah, I didn't realise as you was both still around. Thought you'd have moved on after visiting the Wheel Splendour. Well, we're pretty well done there. Uh, we'll be moving on to the next mine before the end of the day, no doubt. That mine didn't frighten you off, um, then? Well, that depends what you might mean by frightening off. Lots of ghosts around that place. Apparently mm. so. And all thanks to a rather unpleasant fellow known as Lucas Bernard back in the 1860s. That's right. Yeah. Mind you, there are some rather more up-to-date hauntings mm. taking place there now. Huh? How do you mean? Didn't you hear about that group of parawatsit people who got killed in a road accident along there? No. What, paramilitary or something? No, uh, ghost hunting people. Oh. Oh, paranormal. That's it. They'd been doing something one night at the mine, and after they left, their car skidded off the road and plunged over the cliff, killing most of them. Good grief. Oh, blind. How terrible. <sighs> Is this recently? Ooh, it would be about five years ago. Oh, five years ago. Viv, got that newspaper cut in handy about the car accident. Just under the counter there. All right. Now, there you go. Oh. Have a read. Oh, thanks. Absolute tragedy. Good Lord, have you seen the picture, Jake? Oh, it's them. Ellen and Ollie Watts it. Hmm. The ones we went on the paranormal thing with at the mine the other night. I can't believe it. It says here that Ellen oh. Polden and her brother, Oliver Bernard, were killed outright when their car skidded off the road and plunged down a cliff. They'd been oh. investigating hauntings at the Wheel Splendid Tin and Copper Mine which was the workplace of their ancestor, the notorious Lucas Bernard. Oliver Bernard is said to have resembled his ancestor, who was imprisoned after having murdered many of the Wheel Splendor's workforce. Oh, blimey. I got the shivers, Andy. We've got to go. Get away from here. Yes, you're right. Let's get back to the hotel, get our belongings and go. Yeah. I think we've seen and heard enough. Thanks for everything. Bye. Yeah. Cheers, see ya. Oh, well, you two off. But you ain't finished your drinks. Just had to take one more glance, eh? Yep. Has this all been real, Andy? Are we going to wake up and realise it was all a dream? Oh, no. It's all been very real. Very real indeed. We've been experiencing something from beyond, which explains our encounters with Ellen and Ollie and Horace down on the beach with his camera. But surely they can't have been ghosts. They look very real to me. Ghosts and spirits often are. There are more things in heaven and earth, Jake. Now, let's get on our way to the next location and find out what stories that has to tell us, shall we? Yeah, let's do that. But I'd still like to know if what we've experienced here has been for real. Or perhaps it's all just been a trick of the mind. Oh. That's dreadful. <laughs> Come on, you. Yeah, let's let's get the heck out of here. <laughs> <laughs>